streets and love these streets, boy. And they get shot up like in yeah. Philadelphia. Then they'll be wishing they wasn't in those streets. Yeah. That thing was hard. Yeah, we saw that. Man, I listened to that thing, man. I could I couldn't hold my stomach, man. I had to go to the bathroom. That thing was so hard. Yeah. That thing was crazy. And we got people talking about we don't need to talk about no torpedoes. Like hell we don't. They think they could just kill people like that. Yeah. And these, and most of them, like my wife said, the sad part, most of them is Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them Muslim, I think. Going around just shooting up the joints. Shh. Almost time. I didn't post a, a time or any other information about this talk. This is the continuation from today's khutbah. You know, I think I named it uh, The Grave People, um, The Paradise and Hell, Part 1. So this will be Part 2. It's been about the grave, people, paradise, and hell, Part 2. And I'll mention just a few points from the khutbah and then I'll go forward. So in the khutbah, khutbah to Jummah, that's about a quarter I'll accept from us, forgive us for our shortcomings, God is right. I mentioned the hadith that comes in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. And this hadith, Shaykh al razak always smile. <laughs> I wish you to shave, mashallah. I need to make a visit to Allah's house again when I think about this as well. But uh, mm. he explained this hadith to the Razak. And uh, <clears throat> this hadith, Prophet was with one of the companions. And they were walking. It was revealed to him to go down to Baqir, the grave. So he went. And as he was walking to the grave, got there, he said, uff lakum, uff lakum, uff lakum, uff, when something is repugnant, like someone had a smell, a great wind, or a corpse, or something very, he said, uff, and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inna man mushriku na najisun, na, inna man mushriku ma na, what? Nejisun. Allah said, in the ma, in the ma. Same thing the Prophet said, in the ma, a'madu, in the ma, to emphasize. Some said you feel possible. It makes something in the class by itself, and some said it generalizes. And it gives context, emphasis, so key. Here Allah said, in the ma, mushrikun. Verily, the mushrikun, those who make sure. That's why they have the name Mushrikun. The Mu is the person doing the action. Ismu Fa'il. Ismu, the name of the Fa'il, who's doing the action. Mushrikuna. Mushrikuna from the word Shirk. Sharika. They make partners with Allah in their worship, in their sacrifice of animals, in their giving of their wealth, in their one to be rewarded. They seek that and do that to others besides Allah. So Allah called the Mushrikuna. Those say Jesus is God. Mushrikuna. Those who say that Madam Babakalofikum, Jesus is the Son of Allah. That's a type of shirk because you're making Allah have humans and family and He's the Father and He has a Son. And Allah mentioned to say that Allah he has daughters. As well. Oh, it's part of shirk. Well, Allah said, Wa lam kufu Nothing is like Allah. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He didn't have parents, and he himself didn't father children. So, mushrikuna, those who worship idols, those who call on other deities besides Allah, those who deem Allah to be the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Those who believe Buddha 
There's a god, a cow, a rat, a penis, whatever reincarnation, even when they say in the NA and AA, whatever you deem to be your higher power, the hell of the course of the day. And I know, when I was doing internship at the this, this place, Integrity House in Newark, when I was in the two year substance abuse program, Essex County College. They made us do an internship towards the end at the Integrity House. It's a big drug facility down in Lincoln Park. And so, yeah, in the group, that was one of the 12-step methods, 12-step program. You have to make anything your higher power. So a person is afraid he's going to relapse. It's Friday night. He's sitting in the room. He hears his favorite song that that particular song was playing that night when he almost OD'd. Now he has a trigger. He wants to get high. He doesn't say, oh, Allah, protect me. He doesn't make wudu, make turaka. What, he, what does he do? He gets the teddy bear. He said, make anything your higher power. And they give you, the people will give a testimony. I grab my teddy bear and I start praying and ask my teddy bear to, you know, to help me. And, that, and, 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 you know, I made the teddy bear my higher power. Are you serious? Allah, Allah, bring Ashhad. Allah, Azza Allah, bring us witnesses. Allah, Mashhad. Somebody else said they made the doorknob the higher power. Start talking to the doorknob, praying to the doorknob, seeking protection from the, a doorknob. I mean, we used to say back in Jalil, he dumb as a dope. We said dope, but we mean doorknob. He dumb as a donut. <laughs> Somebody making dua can find me seeking assistance to walk up in the doorknob. You guys can be kidding me. And they come back and they cry on Monday and said, you know, if it wasn't for that, I would have lost my 15 years of sobriety. I would have realized that the, the higher power it works. In the night when he lay here on Jones. This is a mushrik, because they're making sure for the law of the all time. And that's why the Muslims can't use the 12-step program unless they tweak it, as they say, or alter some things, because in the shirt, in the man mushrikun, well, Allah said, verily, the mushrikun nejis on nejis. So here, nejis is talking about inward, their belief. Some people use the ayah literally, nejis, meaning like nejis, feces, urine, you touch it, oh man, I can't pray like this, I got to wash it off my hands. They said, if you touch the hand of a Christian or a Jew, it breaks your wudu because Allah said, in them and mushrikun, ma'da, what? Nejis, yeah. impure. But Allah's talking about batin, fi ittiqadihim, as it relates to what they believe, what's in their heart. So this has to be made clear when you talk about this issue, this hadith, when the Prophet وسلم, went to that man's grave at the Baqirah and he said, Uf lakum, three times, Uf, something stinks. What stinks? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the way that we believe. Mm -hmm. If you could materialize it and put it in front of you and fill it and see it, it may stink. Mm -hmm. If you could materialize it, take it, fill it, touch it, smell it, put it in front of you, it may smell good. Rasulullah so mentioned about the believer in the grave. The disbeliever in the grave and the monastic. He said the believer is going to say, What's that rahat al tayyibah? What's that good smell? Mm -hmm. The angel is going to say, Hada amaluka, asalah. Those are your righteous deeds. They smell good. You wash clothes, you use detergent, you use fabric softener, you use bleach. You bring those clothes home, you open the bag. Wow, that's my life. It smells good. Physically. Tangibly, spiritually, makes the house smell good, mm. feel good, same thing. How you feel inside has a smell, physically, spiritually, mentally, perhaps ufalekum. You smell, you foul, stench to you. And we said Allah mentioned that when he was talking about Shuraib, Shuraib said ufalekum. To his people, because they were making shirts to Allah. 
so this hadith we use it, we start it because it, it establishes a lot of things. One, that there is life in the grave. There's life in the grave because some people believe that there's no life in the grave. Like the Christians, I want to listen to some Christians talk about this. And they have three different beliefs. One, when you die, the soul is up in heaven and the sky and the body is in the grave. And that's how it is until the second coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture, and then the soul will be returned to you at that time. You're going to stand up and you're going to go with the Lord. They call it the Adam the Latin. It's Pongrom. It's people crazy. Yeah, a lot of God and God is all. They said that the second type is that when you die, the soul is in a, another place, in some particular type, state of life for the soul, and it's there temporarily. They said, but most people didn't hear about that type of life for the soul. And then, of course, they mentioned when the person dies, his soul is in his body, um, in the grave, but it will be taken out of the body at some point. And it's almost like the first one, except that when you die, the soul goes automatically to the heavens. It never, you know, uh, stays in the grave. And the other, the soul is in the grave with the body, but at some point it comes out. So he mentioned these different things. So likewise, for Solomon, he talked about this issue. And a lot of Isaac was young, mentioned these issues. He talked about the life in the grave. And that some souls will be in the heavens. And we don't mean paradise, because some people confuse. In English, heavens is the sky. And also said, when I die, I'm going to heaven, mean paradise. Two different things. You look up in the sky, that's called the heavens. That's why the prophet said, Samad Dunya, the, the first heavens of the earth, meaning when you can look up. I'll tell you, but you also have different levels of heavens and the distance and you know like shh, you know the prophet went when he ascended through each one like you can't imagine like wow it blow your mind but paradise is a made place it's already made jannah it's called jannah because it's something that the law made where you can't see it so anything that's invisible in Arabic jan it has the gene and the moon so jan the creation the jinn why is it called Jinn? You can't see it. Jannah. Why is it called Jannah? Because it's a place you can't see it. Jahannam. Except it has extra letters, but you hear the gene in the moon. Jahannam. It's a meme at the end. That's the pit of fire, but you don't see it. So they are given those names because Allah made them visible. This is not heaven where the soul is now and where we're going to be because remember the skies are going to be rendered asunder. Even the Christians, they mention and believe that. Earth as we know it now will be destroyed. So how could we're going to be in the sky? That's where we're going to be mm. in the end. It doesn't make sense. It has to be another place. So heaven as it relates to looking up in the sky and heaven as we know it, paradise eternally, two different places. Two different places. So one of the beliefs about the souls, the souls, some of them will be in the heavens, floating around, or in a particular state or place in the sky until the day of judgment, if they're prophets and messengers, if they're people who uh, died in the cause of Allah, they were slaughtered, fighting in his cause. You also have um, other people that it's recorded, they will be like that. And at times, if Allah has ability to do all things, he can send those souls back on earth. He can send those souls back in the grave at the blink of an eye and take them back and let them go and bring them back. And let them, it depends on what he wants. Like with the Prophet Allah said, when someone says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith is clear. Allah allows the Prophet's soul to go back in his body and he says, Alaikum Salaam, back to you, give the salams back to you. So somebody said, but that doesn't make sense because people are saying that 
all throughout the world all the time. So doesn't it just make sense that Allah will leave his soul in his body? Mm. Why does he take it, give it, take it? Well, only when someone gives salam, is given back to him to say it. Listen, we can't do all of that. We just, the text is, is, is Allah's ekbaru. There's no limit to him. He's great. He created us. How great of a creation is that in the text? You know, no big bang theory. So the point is that, yes, life, the people in the grave, and the punishment of the grave, and not being punished in the grave is real. And this is another proof that some people will be punished, some people won't. Because like we said, the hadith, the prophet exhilarated, uh, exemplified, I should say, that when he said about that person, oof. And why he said oof? Because he's being punished. But oof, because of the sin that he did, he was stealing from the war booty. Kolu, taken from what he had no business. Clipping from what he had no business. So that is one of the things that's punishable and the uh, great. Punishable on the day of judgment too, but you gotta go to the grave before you get to the day of resurrection. And some scholars that explain the reason for punishment in the grave is to lessen your punishment on the day of judgment. Because mm -hmm. if Allah just saved all the punishment that's due a person for the day of judgment, some people's punishment is so tremendous, subhanAllah. And this is one of the meanings of Allah's rahmah. He gives you reduction. Could be understood as a rahmah, as a mercy for you. For the believers. Amen. So we're going back in hadith. Prophet of Aleppo, that man was companion, he stole from the Ghalima, the war booty, and the Gulul is the name he took. They said the Gulul also means, we said, Khiyana Filmal. You are someone, you're breaking the trust with uh, wealth. You're trusted to be a certain way with wealth, you violate that trust. You steal, you take, you do embezzlement, you do, you know, stealing. You know, like this. Hey. The second thing they said, Gulul also means Bukhan, a person, and he's greedy. Because you think about it. Why do people steal? And it's not that everyone who steals, they steal because they're needy. Some people steal just because they just want to take it. I remember people having pockets full of money, and there's an opportunity to steal, so they just steal just because they want it and they feel, I can get away with it. That's greed. That's bukhun. Yeah, bukhun. So, gulun is a type of being greedy. You know, you got to have it. Ooh, I want that. You might not need it. You might already have tens and hundreds of them, but you just got to have that one. Oh, I'm just, you know, I need, I need more. You don't need it, but you just, you just take it because you can. It's greed. So, this is part of why that man is being punished because Bulu will hear taken from the war booty also translate to Bukhul being greedy, mm -hmm. which is a major sin. Because if you're a person of Bukhul, you're of greed, then you're going to call and invite others to it. And that also means you're going to be stingy. You're not going to give like you've been told to give. Mm -hmm. So Bukhul being greedy and shuh, stingy, they're like, uh, Brothers and sisters, mm. you can't be greedy without being stingy, and you can't be stingy without being greedy. Mm. Allah mentioned them both, and the Prophet sought refuge in Allah from both of them in the Hadith. Mm. Men of men of Juban wa Bukhul, now Juban wa Bukhul, now being greedy and, and, and you know miserly, you know not wanting to give, you know just piling up. So this hadith is very important because it establishes if the Muslim who dies does a major sin and the major sin is great and Allah doesn't forgive him, he has to be punished. Then what about someone who violates greater than him, who's deserving punishment? Then we can't remove that punishment. And that was why we brought the hadith we talked about the issue of the life of the grave and also you can see it's from the issue of tawheed, aqeedah, belief. We have to believe in the punishment, the life, the na'im of the grave. It's part of the six articles of faith. 
when the Prophet talked about this in the Hadith of Jibreel, he said, Well, took me no, yani, uh, bin Ba'ath in one narration. Ba'ath is resurrection. Resurrection from where? The grave. We used to the narration, said, Well, took me no, bin Qadri, and believe in the divine decree. Khayrahi wa Sharri. The good, Khayrahi, Sharrahi. Khayr, the good of it. Khayrahi, it's good. Or Sharrahi, it's evil. But there's a narration from Sabu Tukminu bin Ba'af. Jibreel told him to believe. Yani, uh, uh, the Prophet told Jibreel to believe in the resurrection. And Jibreel said, You have spoken the truth. So part of believing in the resur resurrection, punishment of the grave, delight in the grave, the life in the grave, question in the grave. You can't deny any of that. It's all connected. Now, also you have the issue we mentioned before where this people try to debate it making tarahim on the kuffar and we have so many issues in the quran you know subhanahu was thinking about this girl and subhanahu you know, so many eyes if we take so to uh shamsi allah said well shamsi wa duhaha swearing by the the sun and the and the time when it's at its highest peak duha وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْبُحَاحَا وَالْقَمْرِ إِذَا تَلَاحَا And the moon when it rotates. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاحَا And the daytime when it is at its splendor. وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَبْشَاحَا And the night when it is like a blanket, you know, over the society. So people think it's dark now. I can do stuff people won't see. وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاحَا and the skies, the heavens, how we have constructed and built them. And the earth, how we have made it and he stretched out. And every soul. And what it and he uh, whispers to it. Every soul and how it has been created, pardon me. فَأَلْحَمَهَا فَجُرْهَا فَأَلْحَمَ to, to be carried فَأَلْحَمَهَا فَجُرْهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And that soul also can carry its evil deeds and it also can carry that of piety and taqwa فَأَلْحَمَهَا فَجُرْهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحْ فَلَحْ being successful هَيْ عَلَى الْفَلَحْ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا and so therefore whoever purifies that soul with that taqwa that is able to achieve as opposed to carry its fujur as evil then that one will be successful in this life and the hereafter فَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا and the opposite Whoever carries his evil instead of the top of it is commanded, then he will be destroyed. Mm. Now, Tabaraku wa ta'ala goes on to say, Kedabat tamudu bi taqwaaha. Tamud denied the message. And what Allah told him to stay away from of the prohibited things. Kedabat tamudu bi taqwaaha. Idem ba'afa ashqaaha. Here is the point. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And what was said to them from the message of Allah فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ The messenger of Allah in that time said to them This is the she-camel of Allah نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ The ulama, they said نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ Like بَيْتَ اللَّهِ Like رسول اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal idhafa shay ila nafsihi min bab takreeb. Allah connects things to His name to show the status of their thing. So if Allah says Rasul, that's one thing. But He says Rasulullah, my messenger, to show this is a great affair and the person is great, the messenger of Allah. Bait, Allah can say bait, but He said bait to Allah, this is my house. This is not like any other house. When you go in, you worship, and you, you know, are saved. Na'atullahi, the she cat, a special camel that Allah sent. Wa suqiyaha, yani, 
and you are to share the water with this camel. So the water that you were supposed to share it. You drink a day, the next day the camel drink, back and forth. Don't y'all take all the water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَتَّبُوا فَأَقَرُوهَا They disobey and they belied the message and they slew the she-camel. فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبَّهُمْ فَدَمْدَمَ Some scholars, they said, dum-dum is like when you hear a loud dum, like a boom or a big clash. Dum-dum. Dum-dum alayhim rabbuhum. The Lord destroyed them with a loud noise and destruction. Be them, be him, because of their sins. Be them, be him, the new, be them, be him. That's so waha. And stretched them out in the example. And then Allah said, Wala yakhafu. Wala yakhafu. They did not the reason they got punished, they did not fear the punishment, the ending that Allah told them they would receive if they disobey. This great surah in the last Jews establishes the punishment of a people in this life and the punishment of the grave and of the day of judgment. Now, so this, Allah most time, when we talk about Many proofs from the Quran. Let's say, let's Allah irham home with the great prophet, this, that. No. And we have Ad with the mood, and let's have al Aika, let's have al Lut, let's have al Noh, Bahamusta. Many examples. Many examples. You know. Even Abi Lahab, you can say, okay, may Allah forgive him, he still was from the prophet's family tree. No. Mm -hmm. That's no right. You know, he was just mad because it was going to mess up their trade in Mecca. Nah. We mentioned again, even the prophet's mother. The prophet allowed him to visit the grave and told him, but you can't make dua for her. You can't ask the law for forgiveness for her. So we mentioned this because, again, people, they try to bring what's called shubuhat, misconceptions to play a game. Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah and his Majmur, his collection of fatalities called Majmur Fatah, Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah. I think it's in 300 and something, 310, 309, in that area. He was asked about those people that are the disbelievers. Will they get their reward? Will they hasid mean? Will they get like any, any account for their deeds? Mean it be, yeah, I mean, Pay if you work. So we said some say no. They won't because they died on shirk. So how will they be rewarded if Allah said the shirk nullified their deeds? They have no deeds to be reckoned. Mafi hisab. Like you go to the store and say, Kamala hisabi. How much do I owe you? That's in Arabic. Kamala hisab. You got milk, bread, this. Tayyip, hasib. Say, ring me up. Hasib. Kamala hisabi. How much is my beer? So, will they be, you know, given some wages for their deeds? That's the question, Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah. He said, there's two perspectives. One, scholars said no of the past. Because they, I mean, their, their deeds are not accepted because they have no deeds. Haban and Thora, shirk wipe their deeds away. Allah said, Wala ashraku, la habita anum ma kan yakmalu. Even the prophets and messengers, had they made shirk, or their deeds would have been banished, wiped away, nullified. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, prophets and messengers. Just give you an example. Not say that, not saying they had the ability to do sure. Mm -hmm. No, Allah made them ma'asun. Ma'asun meaning they will not make any error in the religion. Allah conditioned them. They took the oath. They're going to carry it out. Allah already knew before he chose them. But he's saying no one gets the pass even to the point if a messenger could or would have with his ability to make sure all of his deeds would have been rendered into strength. How about us? And that's one of the points one of the ulama who's alive he mentioned. He said, listen, Allah said that these are habay and Torah. You say, no, they did humanitarian work. It was for the struggle. This, so you saying those deeds count, but Allah said that these don't count. Allah said they won't have it on your Yom Qiyamah. You said, yeah, they will. Allah said they won't be rewarded. You said they should be rewarded. 
Because when you say, may Allah have mercy on them, this is what you mean. Accept their deeds. Like Yusuf Rios, he said, may Allah accept her. Accept her where? The lady who got killed in Palestine. Although, again, we are against whoever killed them. Mm -hmm. Yahudi, Palestinian, we don't care. They, 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 you know, they should be dealt with. I mean, killing is prohibited in Islam, no matter who you are. And she was a person that people loved. It's painful. Mm -hmm. they, they wronged her. The way they killed her was malicious. Yeah. We're not going to let that go. That's part of the Islam. That's part of the mercy for humanity. But at the same time, we can't come and say because of that great act, Allah's all the rules are bro broken down. Allah said, Habiba, Ahmadahom, that these are with him, Allah's Nafish. Mandahom, you have nothing. In order to receive Rahmah, you got to have something. The Prophet said, لا يدخلوا جنة إلا he said, لا يدخلوا جنة بأعمالنا. He said, we will not enter the Jannah by our deeds. What does this mean? This means a person Deeds is not the mere thing that will get them into the gentleman. He said, brother, our deeds are part of the equation. He said, but all of us will enter. No one will enter the paradise except by the rahmah of Allah. Because it's Allah, first of all, guided you to accept his call. That's the first rule for deeds to be accepted. Al-Ikhlas. You have to be you're doing something to be rewarded by Allah, you have to follow Allah's rules. And ikhlas, sincerely for him. You have to accept his deen and do it to be rewarded. And the second, they said, Mataba, to follow the Prophet. So a person don't accept Muhammad from the gate. Number two, they're saying Jesus is the son of Allah, or they might be saying all three, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. Well, let's say they're not saying none of that. They still didn't accept Muhammad. Where, where's the acceptance that will get them the Rahmah of Allah? Now, Malay Sunday, we know it's a difference of opinion, but the show's opinion, even the Muslim, if you don't pray, khalas. Tabakus will not kafir. One of the ways you leave Islam. Mm. Prophet mentioned, when Tabakus will not kafir, whoever leaves the salah is a kafir. <coughs> now, so this, they try to twist and say, okay, well, the Prophet said that some disbelievers will be in paradise. They mentioned Olad and Mushukin, the children, the pagan children. Okay. The pagan children, that hadith, the Prophet when he went on the Mi'raj, the ascension, ascension, he seen children in the paradise. And these are visions like they're going to be in the paradise on the day of judgment. Okay, he's seeing glimpse of those things. Allah let him see the hellfire. Allah let him see a glimpse of the paradise. But he wasn't in the paradise. He's going up to each level of the heavens. As he's going, he's seeing what Allah has allowed him to see. So he asked Jibreel, who are those? He said, Hada Oladu Mushriki. These are the pagan children. So most people try to take that text and say, see? Some of the Muslims will be in the paradise. You gotta be kidding me. The ulama, Shufa Taymiyyah mentioned this case in his Mejimur Fatawa. He said, because these children, they died before a uh, 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 They died before they became a pubic. So any child that dies before they come in pubic, and pubic varies, they can't go to the help fight. Why? Because they're not accountable. That would be unjust for Allah to put them in the fire. They're not accountable for their deeds. They're still developing, learning right from wrong. They don't even have the tools to follow the guidance. So they're going to be in the paradise. And that's what Prophet was told by Jibreel. They are the children of the, many their parents were mushrik, but those children died before puberty. They will be in the paradise. Nah, they will be in the paradise. So you can't take that and use that for somebody who's an adult. You can't take that and use that for somebody who is, yeah, I mean, Allah 
have the uh, ability to choose between right and wrong. No, that hadith, yani, uh, maqsusan li awlad mushrikeen. It's particular to the children who died before puberty and their parents were mushrikeen. People of shirk. The Prophet said, Kulukum ma'luda ala fitr. Kulukum yani na'ma'luda ala fitr. All you were born in a way, fitr are here, some said Islam. Others said fitra means when you hear the truth, you're going to go with the truth, you're going to incline towards the truth. Prophet said who? Changes him. Well, Abba Waba who? Yani his parents changed him to be Jew, Yahudiani, Yahudani, or Nasarani, or Yemajisani, making him Jew, Christian, fire worshiper. Who does it? The parents. SubhanAllah. But if that child dies before cubit, he's in the jungle. So you can't use that text. Say adults will be in the paradise. You can't do it. Now, we also have the issue of the believers. The believers it was asked, where will the believers go? The general belief is the believers when they die, even if they had sin, they will go to the paradise. They even have to burn in the fire. May Allah protect us, save us. I mean, they're going to come out. Go to the jannah means that's where they're going to end up. Go to the hellfire means that's where the people are going to go temporarily or eternally. So, Shem's not taking me, he mentioned this issue also is much more for time. And then if a person dies upon La ilaha illallah, then as far as we know, that person, Allah, as we just promised him Jannah, except there's something between him and Allah. We leave the light to Allah. We leave the unseen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we make dua, that person be forgiven, that person gets jannah. But we can't say, well, the Muslims don't know where they're going. Nah. No. So we mentioned this before because there's a lot of uh, misconceptions around this issue when we talk about the, the soul and the grave. And yes, there is some people, even from the Muslims again, they don't believe that the soul is going to be in the body. They believe only the body will be in the grave and the soul is not going to be in the grave. But let me mention the punishment of the grave, the light of the grave. And yes, some people's soul will be in the heavens, but it will be returned at certain times for different reasons. But generally speaking, people's soul and body are in the grave. People's soul and bodies are in the grave. And some people will receive punishment from the believers in the grave, they will have punishment maybe in this life, and then they will have punishment on the day of judgment, but they will be pulled out into the jannah. And some people, they might not be punished in this life. Some people say, oh, I'll never suffer the day in my life and live the good life, oh. but he's punished in the, in the, in the grave. Because he didn't believe. So he's punished in the grave, and then guess what? The hereafter is going to be punished on the day of Yom Qiyamah, forever. And sometimes the people punish in this life, punish in the grave, and they punish in the hereafter forever. And sometimes people have no punishment here, but they have a punishment in the grave, and they may not have punishment on the day of Yom Qiyamah, if they were believers, that their case could be, or they may be punished in this life, punished in the grave, punished in the day of judgment, but then taken out, and going on to eternal bliss. That's the most powerful with Allah for his help and safety. Keep us from the fire. Give us eternal bliss. Now, so this, yeah, I mean, these points are very important. And one last point, I didn't get a chance to clarify the khutbah. I mentioned the issue of George Floyd. And I mentioned it, but then I kept going and didn't come back. Why did I mention that? Because there's also a bit of racism with regards to this issue of the lady who's killed in Palestine. And yes, again, her mission, subhanAllah, if there's any mercy for her, as some scholars said again, reduction of punishment is the mercy that Allah gives a non-believer like Abi Talib. Some have that position. That's Allah's mercy for them to give them a lighter punishment than the punishment they will deserve it. Some said no, yani, that's not a mercy for them. They don't get any mercy. And the 
punishment they get, if it's reduction, it's the reward for what they did of their deeds in this life. That's how they would be rewarded. So it's two different ways to look at what happens to the one who's punished and this punishment is lessened. Is it a mercy or is it um, just due for the payment of what they did in this life because they won't be repaid uh, with going to the paradise and won't be repaid with things like the believers. And so now you have the issue I said when the George Floyd were killed, and this primarily we got this, the, 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 the Muslims who had something to say about primarily African Americans why y'all talking about that? Why y'all even concerned? He's a Catholic, he wasn't a Muslim. Okay, this lady, she wasn't a Muslim. But you got people all over the world because of, of her, 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 you know, her job, what she was doing, you know, her struggle. How did I just praise her? But the people then I didn't hear no one say, you know, from those people, well, she wasn't a Muslim. No, that, that part went out the window. Why? Because the role that she played, you know, she was for the people. She was Palestinian, you know, American. They said if she was just Palestinian, she wouldn't even got that covered. But because she was Palestinian American, so even the politics, you know what I'm saying. How she looks, she looks whiter as opposed to not whiter. You know, all of this stuff. So power of love, politics. And it's a dirty game because at the end of the day, this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah commands, Don't say anything without knowledge of Allah most time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his issue of help that we ask Allah I mean, to give us help because this is the issue that we need help from Allah. We have to stick to the aqidah. Don't let anybody tell you that's played out, it's old fashioned. Or like people say, no, they have an aqidah wars and people dying of suicide and people, you know, don't have places to eat and, and, you know, people are dying in the street, shooting. Yeah. But all of this is connected to some way, somehow, the void between them and Allah Tabarakullah Ta'ala. The void between us and them and the society, the lack of Tawheed, the lack of the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the lack of giving one another their rights, which is all part of the issue of a battle to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for self and safety. Hada also sambaka na nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabu wa sallam taslim wa And we'll be mentioning more issues related to Aqeed and Tawheed um, in the future, the near future, and we ask Allah for his help. I mean, any questions? Time we got? Well, we only, it's uh, uh, 1025, yeah. Okay, how many? Yeah, so inshallah, we ask the Lord for his help and uh, allow us to rectify our fears, help us. You know, we're struggling all over the world. And um, well, I even one shape he said about this. He said, You don't see any of the Ummah doing this, wanting the people who are outside of our. Mm. Nation, our belief to be forgiven and accepted. Subhanallah. Yeah, I mean, only this one. You don't find the Christian saying when the Muslim mm. kill, you know, may huh. Allah accept. Uh, well, they're not going to say Allah, let's just be straight. They're not going to say that Jesus Christ or the Holy, you know, our Father forgive. No. Mm -hmm. The Jew not going to say it. He hate Muslims. He'll say it. F Jesus, F Negroes. I mean, mm -hmm. they nasty. Mm -hmm. we the only one. We came yeah. up with this, you know, change in the religion, this concept, you know, that's a problem. You guys to be kidding me. So that's one of the points, one of the shoot today he mentioned mm -hmm. when he was talking about this. And uh, lastly, they, you know, some say, well, you can't ask the law to forgive them, but you can ask him to have mercy on them. Mm -hmm. If the prophet will sell them again, he said, no one will enter the Jannah by his deeds alone. Everyone will enter the Jannah by the mercy of Allah, the Rahm of Allah. Or you have Allah saying, Ya'an udukul, ya'ani jannati 
أدخلوا بالسلام يعني السلام سوبر السلام you know these terms salam means the jannah or rubawan the pleasure of Allah one of the names of jannah or rubawan now you know a road of Allah the garden of Allah all of these so like is it thinkable to say okay we can't ask Allah to forgive them but we can ask Allah to have mercy having mercy on someone that needs to be forgiven is the forgiveness mm -hmm. <coughs> that is the mercy if Allah forgives them, that is the Rahmah. Yeah. So, some ulama that said that the Rahmah is included in the ruling of Maqfirah. Because the ayat, Allah prohibit you to respect for Allah and to seek forgiveness. For the munafiqeen in tasbah for Allah sabain marah. If you were to ask Allah 70 times to forgive them, Allah said he will never forgive them. That's the monastic 70 times. So switch it. Allah arham, Allah arham. If you were to ask Allah to have mercy on them 70 times, same thing, Allah will to have mercy on them. You know. One shaykh, he bought this and then we'll end. He said, al Taala's prophet said from the rights of the Muslim, there are many rights the Muslims have. Mm -hmm. But the Hadith in Bukhara Muslim, one of them, إِذَا أَطَشَى وَحَمِدَ اللَّهِ شَمِّتَهُ أَطَشَى is to say, Hachu sneeze. So the Prophet said, if the Muslim sneeze, وَحَمِدَ mm اللَّهِ -hmm. And he says, Alhamdulillah, then the one who hears شم, شَمَّتَهُ يعني, He have to, and some, it said, شَمَّتَهُ وَسَمَّتْ was the scene, but People have seen Shina, Shemetahu means ask Allah to have mercy on him. So that's why when somebody sneezes, said, Alhamdulillah, we say, Yerhamakullah to the Hadith. Shemetahu means Yerhamahu. Ask Allah to have mercy on him. One time the Jew was in the Prophet's presence. And remember, the Jews were there in Medina. They knew like different things and witnessed things. They had things in their book. So he sneezed and he said, Alhamdulillah. And the Prophet didn't say, Yerhamakullah to him. He said, Yahdikum Allah, wa yushbhu ba'lakum. May Allah, <coughs> Yahdikum Allah, guide you, wa yuslihu, and correct ba'lakum your affairs. Why? Laysa lahu rahmah. And that's why he's alive, the Jew. He couldn't say, may Allah have mercy on you. Because even while they're alive, there's no mercy in that regard. The one that the Prophet is saying when you see and you said, Alhamdulillah, you said, Yerhamak Allah. This is talking about, yeah, I mean, not like the Rahmah where he gives you food, drain, children. No, that's a general Rahmah. That's a general Rahmah. Here the Prophet was talking about particular Rahmah when he sneezed. Yerhamak Allah. May Allah have mercy on you, forgive you, make your affairs easy. If you die, admit you to the Jannah. All of this is inclusive in Yerhamak Allah. Because remember, the Prophet also said, when the son of Adam sneezed, his heart stops. Mm -hmm. If Allah wanted to take the soul at that point when you sneeze, you could. So you need Allah mercy if you die. Mm -hmm. So one of the ulama he brought that point from the hadith of Tirmidhi, and this hadith is authentic. The prophet did not say, Yahamak Allah to the Jew who was alive. He said, Yahadikum Allah, may Allah guide you, or used to the whole balakum, and yani, fix your affairs. And this is what you say to I mean, the non-Muslim in this life, how about now when you die? You can't say, Yerhamakallah. May Allah have mercy on her. May Allah have mercy on her. Allah, Yerham home. May Allah shower mercy on them. Why? So this is our aqeed that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help. So, 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 any mistakes for myself or the flaws of the shaitan and Allah's truth for you both. Alhamdulillah. I mean, salam alaykum wa barakatuh. Tell you it's a lot of, and that fatah is loaded. I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing.